doing guys today I'm going to start the process of putting the finish on my fender pan now as you can see since the last video I had in reference to the fender pan I have sprayed the fender pan red and essentially I used what I always use is Duplicolor engine engine enamels and specifically Let's see if we can get that to focus. Come on. There it is. DE165, yeah, 1653 red. Just plain engine red. It's the closest color that I have found to the original wheel horse color. And this end, this paint is really easy to work with. It sprays real nice. It lays down fairly well. Um, and you can wet sand it within 24 hours. I do it. I've used all pretty much all of the projects on my channel, including that little track, that little RJ25 I built in my, uh, in, in my intro that was all painted with this paint and, you know, being engine paint, uh, engine paint, engine paint, uh, it's durable. It's a bra it's fairly abrasion uh, resistance, and you do have a few seconds if gasoline or lacquer thinner actually falls on it, it doesn't necessarily necessarily start to lift up. So it's, in my opinion, this is a good good product. And no, a Duplicolor does not give me anything. They really should, based on the amount of cans I buy from them to do these projects. But with that being said. I thought I'd just show you. So I sprayed the entire thing red and then I sanded it, wet sanded it with 600 grit. That's where we are today. I did have a couple little issues, but this paint tends to be fairly easy to work with. As long as it's completely dry or if you, you've let it dry for 24 hours, things like these small little blow throughs, you can actually tape this off, blow a little paint on it, let it dry for 24 hours and then lightly wet sand it again and it'll blend out. And for example, let me show you right here. I did that. Uh, let me see if I can get this to focus. I did it right here. You can actually see just a very faint like tape line, but it's smooth. It's smooth to touch. Now, just to keep in mind, this is not going to be the finished product. Uh, I actually have a plan for this uh, and I'll show you the, show you the process as I move through but just to kind of show you in general how you know how why I like this paint now I sanded this with 600 that's just a little bit of wax and grease remover and if I go ahead and just wipe it down we really get to see almost what the original finish is going to look like or I should say the final finish and you know I, use, I probably do this a little too much, wipe it all down with wax and grease remover, but one, if you ever do one of these projects and accidentally get a fisheye <laughs> in this paint or in your finished product, man, that could be really angry. And as you can see, that shine is pretty good. And that's essentially what it will look like once I buff it. So now I'm not going to show you quite yet what I'm going to do, but in the next little section of this video... I think you'll start to see something progress. Before I move on, I actually decided to repair that small blow through that I showed you. So this is how I do it. Essentially, I want as minimal amount of paint applied to the fender pan. <laughs> so that means all the overspray, everything. So I'm not gonna go too crazy with it. I got my paint right here. I'm going to fix it right as we speak. Now the big thing is less is more. So let's take this thing outside real quick. Make sure we got some sprayage out of the can because I you don't know how many times I've done this and the nozzle. There we go. The nozzle's been clogged or you know something stupid. It's just it's ridiculous. Because with a spray can you don't really have a lot of control. So here we go. We're just gonna lightly spray this that's it that's all it's all it's going to take i might actually just do one more baby coat and i'll let that sit for about you know, 24 hours and i'll just lightly 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 hit it with 600 and it'll blend away like i showed you on the front so let's just go ahead and just add just a touch more 
That's it. No more. Actually, you can put the can down because I tend to get dangerous with that stuff. All right, so we'll let this dry and we'll eventually turn back to it. And I'll show you how to blend that paint once it dries. And it'll basically make that burn through disappear. I haven't blended out that little spray patch that I did. I'll do that later. What I'm doing here is I'm starting to lay out what my paint scheme is going to look like. Well, that was bad camera work, wasn't it? So let's go this direction. Now, I'm doing this for two things. One, I want to challenge myself to do it. Number two, I want to show you how I do it because I've done this kind of paint work with spray cans on a small scale, not, not as big as this. Um, but essentially, the back half of this uh, fender pan is going to have like a custom paint job done. Uh, so, and this blue line is basically my parting line. So this is going to be all red, standard, wheel horse style. And the back section is going to have the custom paint. And in order to make a nice paint line, I decided to just use some blue tape and create my cutoff line. And essentially, I'm really kind of concerned is right here, because this is what you're really going to see. This is where that the, the, the custom paint job is going to end, because I want it just basically on the back half of the, uh, the fender pan. So I'm, I want to make sure that this is nice and straight. In here, I'm not too worried about it. In other words, you know, this is under the seat, but I want it to be fairly straight. And again, I want to make sure that I have it straight here. And I'm using the blue tape instead of the automotive tape right now, only because I want to get where I want it to be. That way I can pick this up, put it back down, pick it up, put it down without ruining the tape. Because that the green tape is, is a little bit more expensive than the blue. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I got this where I want it. Now I'm going to take my green tape and just right up against this tape. Because I, I you know, it, it, the paint lines right here, it doesn't matter. I basically want it to line up with this hole. I'm going to put that piece of tape in all the way down. That way I know it's lined up and then I can either leave the blue tape or pull it off. It doesn't matter because that's not going to be the tape line. The piece of green tape on the inside is actually going to be the tape line. So let me get that done and then I'll start to show you what I'm going to do along the back half of the, uh, or the tape job that I'm going to do on the back half of the pan. Okay, so with the green tape in place. This is where my parting line is going to be. So from this edge forward, it's all going to be red. And I've got my green automotive, you know, fine tape here. And this stuff is pretty good. You got a little bit of flexibility. It's going to do what I need to do. And what that is, is this. I want to keep this body edge, this lower body piece embossment. I want to keep that red. I don't want that to be painted what I'm painting up here. So what I'm going to do is, and I'm right-handed, so I'm going to control the tape with my right hand. And, and then, I should, I should tell you, my paint scheme that's going to be up here is not going to bleed over the edge. I'm actually going to tape this off right at the top of the rounded part. So my custom paint is going to be on the top and down the back side. This whole section right here is going to stay red. The tape line is going to come along and then follow along the body line up and over all the way across and back up. So basically kind of like a panel, like, and you've seen me paint panels before, uh, a paint, paint a panel before, but I did a brush paint and we're not going to do that with this. We're going to spray it with a can. So I'm going to, uh, you know, I'm going to, I'm right handed. So it's easier for me to control the roll of tape with my right hand and then use my left hand to kind of press it into place, make sure I have a good feel or good good ad adhesion all the way across that body line. And I'm just going to move along nice and slow. I'm going to try to do it in one piece of tape. I did cut the end of the tape with my scissors as close to 90 degrees as I could, so that way I can butt it right up against my green tape as best I can. I'll put another little piece over the top, so that way I don't get any real blow through or bleed through from the paint. Kind of come along, down, around, and back up. So I'm going to do that. It's going to take me some time. I am going to have to go slow. Can't do that. You know, I, don't, I want that edge to be as smooth as possible. So let me get to work and I'll be right back to show you how bad it came out. 
So after a little bit of back and forth, I got it laid out about as good as I can. Um, the edge looks, you know, the, I'm looking at the inside tape line just to make sure that from this position, it looks fairly even. It does. I mean, it's not perfect. I mean, this looks like this could be, uh, you know, arced a little bit better. I probably will do that in a second. I'll just, but you know, it's a lot of back and forth, back and forth. But I think in general, it looks pretty good. Now, I'm going to get a brand new sharp razor blade and I'm going to cut this. Oops, sorry. I'm going to cut this right on that line, that tape line. So that way I can try to minimize as much bleed of the paint as I possibly can. I'm going to do that on both sides because I don't want this whoop de doo over onto the other piece of tape. Uh, next is I'm going to tape off what in the center of what I want to keep red. So the second color has been sprayed. I'm going to let this just uh, dry a little bit and then I'll pull all the tape and the paper off it. The third color is going to be applied basically the same, same exact style tape job. So I'm going to get that done, shoot the second, or excuse me, shoot the third color and then we'll get back to it. So as you can see, I did tape off that white. I am doing all the stars right now and I got to tell you the stars are a total pain in the butt. I am wasting more blue tape <laughs> than you can imagine. Um, essentially, I made a pattern of a star, trace it onto the tape, cut it out with the uh, utility knife, and then put the stars on. But I can only get like maybe three or four stars per um, you know, pattern. So as you can tell, I'm using up my blue tape fast and furious. So let's keep on going. That colossal mess of blue tape is what was required. I mean, there's just, there's probably a quarter of a roll of blue tape uh, in there. It's what I needed to, it's what I needed in order to do the stars. And there it is. Now, it's not 100% mint perfect, but, you know, it still needs a lot of work. Um, you know, some of the tape lines, as you can tell, are not crisp, but I'm not too worried about that because I'm going to wet sand this with like 2000 grit just to get it nice and smooth and flat. And then with a 3000 grit uh, buffing pad by hand, you know, wet. And that will get rid of all of this stuff because it's just sitting there. So before we can do that, there is one thing I do need to do, and that is to respray the red. I do have to respray the red um, for twofold. One, there's a pretty good tape line right here. I want to build the red up so that way when I sand it, it sands nice and smooth. Um, I'm not too concerned. Uh, obviously, I didn't put stars here because the seat comes right there. The seat comes all the way up to here. So that'll help me in my sanding process to not mess up the crisp edges. Now, granted, some of the crisp edges we don't have. We have a little blow through right here. So when I tape off the white, I'll use good quality automotive tape, uh, the yellow tape. So it's thin and sticks good. Uh, here, I'll just run my green fine line tape around the arc and then just tape off with the yellow. And then either I'll put a piece of paper, masking paper there. I'll probably put a piece of masking paper in this area. That'll be uh, all taped off. Everything's already sanded. It just needs to be wiped down. And then we'll put a coat of red over the entire piece. And then let that dry. Pull the maskings off. The, the tape line should be very minimal where I can just buff them down with like 2000 grit. And it should all start to come together. Then I can buff it and wax it. Or not wax it, but buff it polish it, make it look real, you know, nice and shiny and perfect. Now, you probably can see a couple things. There's something right there, and there's something right there. And what that is, is this. The red paint I had sitting for about four or five days. So it was good and dry. And then I sprayed the white. I sprayed all this white, sprayed the stripes. I did that little less than 24 hours ago. I thought the paint was ready. I uh, wet sanded this side of the paint, the white, and then masked it off, put the stars in and sprayed it. 
But what ended up happening is I got a little bit of crazing. I'm going to try to show you it. Mm, it's hard. Maybe I can back. Now, well, you saw it in the other light. There is a little bit of crazing in this area. I'm not too concerned about it. It's not that deep. You can't see the white through the crazes. So I can probably buff those down and you'll never know unless I told you. And then what else did I do? I'm trying to think here. Oh, one thing I did here is I made a determination. You can see how this gets a little wider, comes across. The reason why I did that is this. I wanted the stripe from the back to look straight. You know, I wanted the tape lines just to look straight. I didn't want it to be like this. The other thing too is when you look at the top here from this direction, I wanted the red, the red stripes to be straight. It's a little difficult to do that here without it looking kind of weird. Not saying that this doesn't look weird, but I think it does. I think it looks the part. I'm real happy with this. And as you can tell, when you look at the side of the tractor, the stripes aren't going to come up, didn't come up and over because I have the cream, the wheel horse cream wheels. And I think if you saw that white line with the cream wheels, it would just look weird. So I didn't want to do that. So I left it tape lined it off. Same thing over here. I didn't, because I didn't go over on the other side. I didn't want to come over on this side. Thus I taped it off. All right. So let's let this cure for a few days and then we will jump back on it. So with a little bit of dry time, um, I went ahead and started to wet sand this paint. I'm, I'm doing it with 1500 and ultimately I'll do it with a 3000 grit uh, polishing pad, but I'm also trying to make it look aged. I want it to look like it, not that it's going to match the patina of the tractor, but it's going to look a little aged. Like this paint job has been there for a while. And one of the things you can do to do that is when you put one color over another color with this duplicolor paint, if you don't give it the, the 48 hours that it kind of recommends, you'll, you'll get a little bit of paint reaction. And what I mean by that is this. If you notice the blue, my camera might not pick it up. There's a little bit of like crackling and that's the white paint underneath the blue it reacted it did it in a couple spots but it kind of gives it an aged look and that's kind of like the the look i was going for um also you know when i sand it i kind of sand through the the color in a few spots there's a little bit of like fading of the paint right in this area you know a little bit of wear so to speak in that area but overall so but let me see if i can get this but with the three, like I've done this section here with the 3000 grit sandpaper or polishing pad, I should say. And you can see that it's pretty darn straight and it's pretty darn sh shiny too. Now I haven't buffed this. I don't know if I'm going to buff it. I'll probably leave it kind of like at this 3000 grit um, finish because it does look kind of, kind of faded, kind of worn. I haven't done up in this area yet. I just started doing it. So I'll finish up but essentially that's what it's going to look like now i'm not trying to burn through the paint to the primer yeah um, i'm just going to try to age the the red to a point that it looks semi-believable now keep in mind 90 percent of this entire area is covered by the seat because the seat comes to probably right about where that stripe is um, covers all the way up to here, so I don't really care about the bleed here. I'm not going to bother. It doesn't matter about the tape line, but, you know, you can see the tape lines are pretty darn sharp. You know, a little bit of this, that, the other thing, but overall, it came out real nice. The edge here is real tight. The edge here is real tight. So I'm going to go, and I haven't even done the front yet, so, but I'll get there eventually. So I'm going to let this thing sit out in the sun a little bit more to, to dry and I will be back at it. Hopefully it will be nearly finished. Well, my OCD took over and as you can tell, I have been polishing this to, to a pretty nice shine. I mean, that's what it looks like. The 3000 grit uh, polishing pad. This is what it looks like after it's been uh, compounded. And as you can tell, the, the reflection in the paint is pretty, it's pretty much perfect. Now it's not mint. 
as you can tell, there's a chip here already. I put it on the tractor just to take a look at what it looks like. And of course, the second I put it on the tractor, bang, I clipped that edge and took a chunk of paint off. So I'll have to do a little touch up there. I might not even touch it up. I don't know. But overall, people have asked me, how the heck do you do this? With this paint spray can, I don't like to use a buffing machine. It's, it's really not designed. The paint's not designed for that. Uh, it can twist, you know, you could get a twist mark in the paint if you uh, heat it up too much. So basically I just use 3M auto rubbing compound and paper towels. Start at one corner, move across it real slow, and as you can tell, the, uh, ref my, the reflection of my hand in the paint is pretty, pretty perfect. So that's how I do it. Now I just have just this last little section here to do. And then I'm going to flip it over and tackle the inside. So after finishing buffing it out, I'm quite happy with the, the results. I mean, the welding and the body, you know, the body work itself came out really, really nice. Paint could have came out a little bit better, but, you know, it's very presentable. And from a distance, you really don't see the flaws, so to speak. Um, thing that's interesting is I'm going to use my thermal heat uh, thermometer here to take a look at the temperatures I have I've had this thing sitting out in the Sun the last couple days and let's just take a look here Is this thing gonna focus yeah it's like what, 123 degrees roughly and then the, the white in the white it's about what 100 and oops there we go 102 or so 103 the red is running about 105 106 and then it, I painted the bottom uh, black so let's just take a underside temperature, you know, 133. So, you know, when you leave them outside like this, they do tend to cure a little bit harder. And that's essentially what I'm doing. I'm just leaving it out here in the sun so that way it can start to cure. Everything is super, super flat and shiny, uh, except for one little area. I don't know if you can see that in this particular shot, but right here, uh, right in this area, right in this area, right here, there is a little whoop de doo You do see a little bit of a weird reflection uh, in the paint, but hey, what are you gonna do? It is what it is. All right, guys, I think I'm gonna end this video off right here. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for all your support, nice comments. Please like, share, and subscribe, and if you could just, uh, you know, have a great day. Thank you, bye.